Okay, welcome back everybody. Why don't we proceed on with our next set of three talks. Uh, the next talk will be given by uh, Linda Kennedy from the Columbus Public School System. And she will be talking about synchronization of coupled mechanical oscillators. session with the physics department. I'm the RET and the RUURET. Uh, and I've, I've uh, really enjoyed working with young people and with uh, uh, Dr. Andrick on our uh, topic synchronization of coupled mechanical oscillators. Okay, so first of all, we uh, read a paper by James Pantaleone. And in that paper, he was uh, giving a mechanical demonstration of the Kurimoto model. Now, if you're not familiar with that, uh, the Kurimoto model is applied to uh, many different kinds of systems, biological systems, chemical systems, physical systems, where there is synchronization of these uh, uh, oscillators that don't have simple harmonic motion. And what uh, Pantaleon did is he took uh, a balsa board on top of regular soda cans and put two metronomes like this one and he started them out of phase meaning uh, they were going in opposite directions and then as they would swing back and forth that would cause the board to move uh, back and forth and eventually they would synchronize. So this is the original experiment that we based this on. And in his paper, this is the diagram that he has that shows the uh, experimental, which are these big dots, and the theoretical. Uh, and we'll see that again later. I'll address that again later. Um, basically, Pantaleon's scaled equation for metronomes is a special case of Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, you have the angular acceleration and the gravitational torque. These are used to describe just basic metronome uh, motions. Then we have the Van der Poel term, and the Van der Poel term describes the driving mechanism because these have to be wound, and there's a, a, a mechanism in there that kicks the metronome so that it'll keep moving. And then finally, we have the coupling term, which describes the motion of the board, uh, the horizontal motion of the board. Um, now, the, all of this would be uh, an equation representing one metronome. You would have a similar equation for the other metronome, where one and two are interchanged. And up here, you would have one minus delta, which is the phase difference, rather than one plus delta. So what we did in our research cycle is I was the technician, basically, and I would set up metronome pairs and collect data. Then we would take the data, uh, we processed it using a uh, lab view program that was designed for us by uh, Professor Thomas Stillman. And then using Mathematica, Excel, we would analyze our data according to the theoretical model and then make adjustments to the research design, and the whole thing would start over again, so it was quite a cycle. Um, in running a data set, as I mentioned, we used the lab view. Of, what we found out was that to match the experiment and the theory, we needed more coupling than, than was, was provided by the original theory, the uh, equation I just showed you. So we had to do a lot of modifications, a lot of modifications. You'll notice we did over 200 runs of the experiment between June 22nd to July 26th. And um, I uh, use a lot of, uh oh, where is it? It's at the bottom. At the bottom, yes. I use a lot of humor in my um, teaching. And so I thought that it would be best just to show you what I did rather than talk about it. It reminded me a little bit of one of those 1960s scientific 
uh, instructional videos. So, a little three minute. So this is very similar to Panaleon. very important. Theoretical uh, 
side would be an infinite number of metronomes on an infinitely long board, which we can't do. But we would let, we have done a few runs with three metronomes, um, and we hope to try some other variations. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, so this paper is now open for discussion. Yes. What is the optimal board setup? Um, we are leaning toward the the balsa board in some sort of a, a suspension. Um, we we uh, Chad and I managed to to send some string up through the ceiling tiles, and when we lifted it up off of the cans, we seemed to get better data. Now, in the last couple of days, we've gone back to the cans now that we have that coupling term, and see if we can. Uh, uh, rectify some of the differences we had with the cans, but it seems that the suspended seems to work best with matching the theoretical, theoretical and the experiment. And is it uh, like the shortest amount of time for them to synchronize, or how, how, how do you define the optimal? What's the principle that makes? Yeah. Oh, well, what makes it optimal yeah. is that the theoretical and the experimental have the best fit. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, now that we've got uh, an equation to work from to see what setup gives us the best fit between the theoretical and the experiment. Yes? To make sure I understand, so the metronomes are set to the same tempo, just out of phase? Uh, for the most part, we, we ran most of them at 208. Both um, of them the same? And, and both of them the same okay. and at 180 degrees phase difference. Now, in the past uh, week or so, we've tried one at 206, one at 208. Earlier on, we tried, well, what if we had them at 192? And it seems that you want to stay more toward 208 to get the theoretical and the experimental to match. But we did do some that were 206, 208 that had some pretty good results. And then if you start to get more metronomes, where? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Okay. Yeah, it'd be what interesting. What were you doing with three? Hmm? What were you doing with three? How were you setting them up? Um, well, we had to have a discussion with three because, you know, we started them like this. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I said to Dr. Andrick is, um, which ones go to the right and which ones to the left? And then, of course, the more metronomes you get, then you need more hands there because you need to start, or do you start them all? Do you just start the outside ones and let the center ones start to swing on their own because the board's going to start to swing? So as we add metronomes, then of course there'll be some technical, like how do you start them? Do you start them all going? We did do some runs where we started them in phase just to see what would happen because their frequencies aren't exactly the same. They're close, but they're not exactly the same. So if we started them in, they would get out and then go back in. Okay, okay let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.